let's look at Monday. The beginning of week 23, there are six games on. We need to be extra cautious of what we're adding, be really tactical in the moves we make, and be super vigilant in listening to Michael Bolton. Thanks, Josh. It's Michael Bolton here, and it's time for another episode of the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast. Let's get to it. Let's get to it, indeed. You are Locked On Fantasy Basketball, your daily fantasy basketball podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Hello and welcome to the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast brought to you by Basketball Monster. My name is Josh Lloyd and after the NBA season is over, I am rebranding this podcast into an Amarillo Sod Poodles fan show. I'm also the lead fantasy analyst at BasketballMonster.com and you can find me on Twitter as always at RedRock underscore B-Ball, on TikTok at RedRock underscore B-Ball, and on Instagram at Locked On Fantasy Basketball. Today's episode is brought to you by Fangio. We'll make every moment more right now. New customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $150. If your bet wins, visit Fangio.com slash Locked On to get started. Thank you also for making Locked On Fantasy Basketball your first listen every day. We are free. We are available on all platforms. All right. We are a couple of things we, we want to... We're going to immediately... Approach the bench for a sidebar immediately. Um, Normally, we have a schedule of shows through the season, whereas to me, this is Monday morning. If you guys, Sunday afternoon, we do a waiver wire show. Not doing it. Not doing it today. Not doing it next week because we have two weeks left in the season. We have 12 active game days left in the season. There's no point me telling you, well, this is going to be a longer term ad. No, 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 no. Don't worry about any of that. Who's the most added? Who's the most dropped? Do you injure it? None of that matters at this point. None of it matters. Because it's so much, I, I could tell you this guy's must roster, then he gets a fake injury in two days' time, Larry Market, and then he's out. Like, I, I don't know. So we're going to be scrapping the waiver wire shows. I'm not going to be doing the injury update show. I'm not going to do it. Because we're going to do injury updates every single day when things change. We are the fantasy trend show. I was going to do it, but actually the, the day that I normally do that show, I have to actually take my car finally in to get fixed. So we're just going to be, the long and long and the short of it is that we're going to a daily recap show and a daily look ahead show over these two weeks. I think that covers all the info rather than me creating that extra show, which I, I do love doing, but I think a lot of it is pointless information and I don't want to provide you guys pointless information. I right? don't want to do that. I think that's a waste of your time and my time. So in order to make up for not having that show, maybe watch this one twice, run through it twice. The second part is, second sidebar. You might notice if you're watching a video, I look a little bit different today than yesterday. Right? Nice haircut, nice little smooth haircut. What, a, what an innovation. I went to the, went to the footy, watched the Western Bulldogs have a big win yesterday over the West Coast Eagles, got there early and walked in and said, oh, yeah, wow, I do need a haircut. And there was a little, it was a haircut station at the, at the stadium. So like if you buy a can of beer, you get a free haircut. Okay, sure about this? All right, go over there. Well, I didn't feel like getting the, a full strength can of beer, got the low alcohol beer, $8 and a free haircut with it. So I so said, sit in there, get it all back. I don't know. I wish I remember the, the lady's name, the girl's name who uh, did that for me. Uh, she was awesome with getting the haircut done. Eight bark haircut and a can of low alcohol beer, which was actually tasted pretty good. Pirate life, shout out to them. So that's what happened. I thought it was an interesting experience getting my hair cut while waiting for the footy to start and got it done for eight bucks. So started the week off with a W. Let's hope you guys can start off the week with a W. We're looking into week 23 here. How far should this sidebar extend? A little bit further because... Again, when we're going to talk about these weeks, things get unbelievably annoying towards the end of the week. You have the gigantic Friday schedule. You've got the gigantic Sunday schedule. And then heading into week 24, you've got a Monday with zero games on. You've got a 15-game Friday, a zero-game Saturday, and a 15-game Sunday. Next week, week 24, teams have one quality game. That is it. There is only two streaming days in week 24, Wednesday and Thursday, and no one plays on that back-to-back. So we'll talk about this later on. It is turning into nonsense stuff. And the next four days is the only period of time where we have multiple days in a row of low volume days where there is streaming capabilities to benefit you in terms of, if I add this guy here, I get a couple of extras. It's the only time the rest of the year. Cool? First game. We're looking at the Brooklyn Nets and the Indiana Pacers. The Nets are coming into this one on a back-to-back. If you aren't aware, when we look at the schedule that I've 
put up the top of the screen on the graphic the capitalized names or the capitalized words. Maybe it's, again, I haven't found a better way to present this, but the capitalized days are the streaming days. The lowercase days are the non-streaming days. So Brooklyn goes Monday, Wednesday, Saturday, Sunday. So that is three quality games to start the week. And then next week, they only have three games. Obviously, they don't play on Monday because nobody does, but they have Wednesday as their quality game and then Friday, Sunday, because literally every single team in the NBA plays Friday, Sunday next week. I will also address this because apparently Yahoo, they would never make a mistake. Um, The way that things are displaying on Yahoo at the moment is completely incorrect. And I know that you're going to know, I guess, what I'm saying is that there are games that show up as postponed and people think that those stats aren't going to count. That is unbelievably blatantly false. The game that was postponed is a game from before the All-Star break when the Golden State Warriors coach, the the, um, untimely passing of Deji, when he passed away, the Warriors-Mavericks game that they had to cancel at that point got rescheduled into this week. So that meant that there was another game involving the Hawks that had to get moved around as well in order to accommodate that, right? So you'll see a postponed tag on Warriors-Mavs and there's a postponed tag on one of the Hawks games or whatever it is, right? That game has not been postponed now. That game is being played this week and the stats all count. I've had multiple people, hey, I'm going to drop this guy. These games, are, Their games are postponed. They've only got two games this week, right? Please, that is a horrible way for Yahoo to display that without any explanation whatsoever. So when you look at the schedule and it says postponed, those games are on. They were postponed from two months ago. And this is the make update. This is the game. Those games are on right now. Don't look at this and think, well, I'm not going to get any stats on these days. That is blatantly false, but I understand why you would assume that. So that's got nothing to do with the Nets here, but it is very, very important for people to know. They don't look at this because I'm going to drop my Mavericks or my Warriors or my Hawks. Just look, they're not playing. The games are postponed. Garbage, not true. These are the makeup games. These, The games that are on are the games that are on. Whew. All right. Um, Indiana. They play Monday, Wednesday this week, but then that is it for quality games for them. In fact, they are one of only a handful of teams that do not play a single quality game next week. So after Wednesday, the Pacers play on a 12-game Friday, 13-game Sunday. I believe it's a 13-game Tuesday, 15-game Friday, 15-game Sunday. So any fringe Pacers, you are done with them after Wednesday. Done. That might be yeah, that's Tim, Tim McConnell, Aaron, Aaron Nee Smith, Andy Nembhard. Maybe it's Jalen Smith. It's a shocking schedule. Injuries. Cam Johnson is in for Sunday, but I don't know whether he's going to play on Monday. Dennis Smith is in on Sunday. I don't know that he's going to play on Monday. So we're out with that. For the Pacers, we do want to watch Neesmith because the minutes are very, very strong. The production for him, though, is relatively mid. With only six games on, though, there is at least some value there, but I'd like to feel a bit more confident in what he's doing. In terms of guys getting boosted, they have been giving more minutes to Trent and Watford. Now, we're going to see what happens. Because if Johnson is playing, we'll get an idea of this on Sunday. Like, what happens with Watford? Does he go back to zeros? Do they take Dayron Sharp out of the rotation? Which is absolutely baffling to me they're doing this. To give more minutes to Clowney. Like, you, I, I get that. I like Clowney. I like Sharp as well. It's not like Sharp's a seasoned veteran who they know who he is. We don't. We've got no idea. So that, that's weird that's happening. But Watford's getting boosted. And Andy Nampard's getting a boost for Indiana as well. You probably get one out of ten that's good for him. Finding the right day is, is tough to do, but he's getting somewhat of a boost, of course, with Ben Matherin's season being over. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook. Get buckets with your first bet on FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook, because right now, new customers, you get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That is $150 if your bet wins. So bet all of your favorite NBA players and NBA teams with quick bets, Live same game parlays, exclusive props, your basic money lines, your spreads, game totals, NBA championship futures, the tournament stuff, who's going to win that, who's going to win the individual games. There's so many different options on FanDuel. And get yourself those bonus bets by getting a winning $5 bet to start things off. So go to FanDuel.com slash locked on and shoot your shot. FanDuel, official sportsbook partner of the NBA. And don't forget to gamble responsibly. Okay, let's go into, there was so many sidebars, we got through one game in that segment. Let's do the next one. It is Boston taking on the Charlotte Hornets. Um, 
Boston plays Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Sunday this week, and then they play Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, Sunday. So they've got one quality next week. The Hornets, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Sunday, and then they go Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday, Sunday next week. So they've got the Wednesday game instead of the Thursday. At the moment, injury-wise, Jaden Springer is on the injury report, the package. He is questionable. Well, he, he sorry, I'm labeling him questionable. Alexei Pokashevsky was ruled out on Sunday for the Hornets, so I'm going to put him as questionable for this game on Monday with an illness. For the Celtics, when the Celtics have been healthy, Al Horford has played like 23, 24 minutes. Last game, he played 31. So, okay. That's really pretty interesting, I think. Because what it meant is that our stream options of Peyton Pritchard and Sam Hauser were completely nothing. Luke Cornett played zero minutes. Is that what the Celtics are going to do in this one? We're going to really get 30 minutes of Al Horford against the Hornets? I don't know. The minutes were very interesting. In terms of guys getting boosted, like Porzingis gets boosted too. I think he played 37 minutes. He's usually just through the roof. They are feeding a lot of stuff to Porzingis. So this team not only is frustrating in terms of we don't know if they're going to sit starters or what they're going to do, but in the games where they're not sitting starters, they're playing them more and giving them more usage than they have at other points of the season, which doesn't really add up. So it's a little bit all over the shop. Obviously for Charlotte with everybody out and not coming back, shout out to Mark Williams, official non-diagnosis legend. Vasily Misic continues to get the boost. So does Trey Mann, so does Dick Richards. These guys have been boosted for weeks and weeks and weeks. Yet they are still rapidly and... Rapidly? The wrong word. Um, readily available. They're there, everywhere. You can add them. Adam. Over 50% still for all of those guys. And it probably shouldn't be the case. I was trying to hold off on doing this show for as long as possible because I wanted some sort of information on this absolute disaster class of a game, Memphis and Detroit, and I don't really know where to go with it. But nothing came, so I'm going to... Well, I almost said something completely wrong. That it's okay. Memphis plays Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Saturday next week. Well, this week, week 23... So we've got the three qualities. So does the Pistons. Exact same schedule. Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Saturday. Next week, they got four games each. The only difference is that Memphis plays on Wednesday. Detroit plays on Thursday. And then, of course, they play the Tuesday, Friday, Sunday, like basically every team. Injury-wise, we'll talk about the Grizzlies in a sec. We'll go to the Pistons first. I don't think Simone Fontecchio is going to play. I don't think he's going to play at all this week. He could, but I just don't know. Marcus Sasser missed the last game as questionable. And if I want to talk about, like I did with Boston, about confusing stuff, well, the Pistons rotation is ridiculously confusing at the moment. You might think, well, that's been the case all year, and it's true. But Cade Cunningham sat out two games on a back-to-back. Knee injury management was questionable for another one, and had played 31 minutes in all the games leading up to it. So then, of course, against the Wizards, he plays 37. I mean, what? How? What? How, why would that happen? I don't know. I don't know why that would happen. That's a very good question. Jaden Ivey sat a random game against the Wolves with knee soreness. Why? You were going to lose it anyway. And then he played 38 minutes against the Wizards. His minutes before that, 24 without Cade, 29 without Cade, 27, 29, 29, 24. And then they pumped 38 minutes into him against the Wizards of all teams. Why? Why is any of this making any... It makes no sense. I said, I'll give you Cade's exact numbers. 37 against Washington, 29-0-0, 29-29-0, 32-32. All right, sick. What about Jalen Duran? 35 against the Wizards. Cool. 25 the game before that, 0-0-0 before that, 27, 22, and 29 the three before that. So why do they just pump every minute into the starters in that one game? Will they do it again against a bad team in the Grizzlies? Are they trying to get like fake wins at the end of the season to make themselves feel better? And in like justify keeping Troy Weaver around? I don't know what they're doing. Marcus Sasser was out in the last one. Taj Gibson is going to be out. We already know Quentin Grimes is out for the year. Sasser, I think, has got a chance of returning here. As for the Grizzlies, well, I I don't know. I really don't. I, I am saying that just basically anyone can be questionable. Now, I feel confident saying Vince Williams is out. Marcus Smart is out. Um... We know that Zaya Williams and Derek Rose are out. I'm pretty sure Yuta Watanabe is going to be out. The question marks then come with um, like John Concha, little John Concha, who's missed three games with a random foot heel issue. I don't think he's going to play. Desmond Bain came back. He's missed two out of his last four, played 40 minutes in one of those other ones, and he's had that back soreness issue. Does he play this game against Detroit? Because they go Detroit, Milwaukee, Detroit, Philadelphia, San Antonio. So they've got three tankings out of their next five games. 
So I don't think that Desmond Bain plays in this one. Jaron Jackson played only 26 minutes against the Magic. I don't think he plays in this one. He's got one more game left, Jaron, to hit the 65 game mark to make him eligible for all defensive teams. Santi Aldama missed the last game with an illness. Does he return? I don't know. What about Luke Kennard? Does he have knee soreness pop up? Does Jordan Goodwin play on his two-way deal? I think he can play seven out of their remaining, what is it, eight games. Oh, no, uh, yeah, six, seven out of their remaining eight, I think he can play. What about Trey Jemison? I think it's about the same for him. I just don't know with any of those guys. It is all over the place in terms of availability. And my best guess is Jaron and Desmond probably don't play. Conchar doesn't play. Vince doesn't play. I think Goodwin does play, but I just I have no idea. I have no idea. So what am I watching on the Memphis side? Well, what about my mate, Malginia Pereira? He actually played big minutes last time out. What did he actually play? He played 29 minutes last game. Like, this is where we're at. So if you want to feel like you have any confidence of big minutes of Desmond Bain or big minutes of Jaron Jackson, don't, because Malzinha Pereira is playing 29 minutes. So I do want to... Like, he was all right. He put up good defensive numbers. But that's where we're at. Chimizzi Metu for the Pistons. We want to watch that. He... We talk about the frustrations of the minutes, but what about this bloke's role? He has gone... 22 and 20, his first two games, and then started and played 39, came off the bench and played 17, started and played 32, and then came off the bench and played 26. So is he back starting in this one? Are they doing the um, Troy Brown, Shemezi Metu uh, back and forward? Continue? They get, is that what they're going to keep doing? I don't know. How could I know? How could anybody know? How could anybody understand the workings of Monty Williams and these rotational decisions? There's no, no common sense. At least Metu played good minutes last game coming off the bench. Brandon Clark. I think he is getting boosted because I don't think that Jaron's going to play. Now, Brandon is not going to be able to play 28 minutes a night. He barely would play 28 minutes a night even when he was healthy. And he's coming back off an Achilles number. Or number? An Achilles surgery. But he's looked pretty good. He played 21 minutes and 20 minutes the first two games. I think he gets another 21, 22. But he gets the boost because I don't think Jaron plays. There's a chance Santi doesn't play. And I don't know if Trey Jemison plays with his two-way contract nonsense who didn't play last game either. So there's a big opportunity here. And the guy that also gets boosted for Detroit is old mate Tosan Ebwamwan because he's been starting every game. He's, well, not every game. He started the last three now and he started five out of the last six. And the one he didn't start, he played 29 minutes. Now, again, reliability on this is tough because he came off the bench and played 29 minutes. The next game he started and played 16. So I can't trust any of that. And he's not a great option. But we're going to have some weird names here like Metu, like Pereira, like Ebwamwan. Like Bud Bayheim, like Jared Roden. These are real NBA players that are going to play, at some point, real NBA minutes. We just don't know when. Also, you've got to keep an eye on Jordan Goodwin's availability, Trey Jemison's availability, and Scott Pippen, who started but played backup minutes last game as Goodwin came off the bench and played starters minutes in a reserve role. It's literally just all over the shop. Like, it is crazy how all over the place it is. Don't play fantasy outside of Roto at this point in the season. Cannot stress that enough. Yeah, but you just want to win the easy way. This is how the real championships are won. Sick. Today's episode is brought to you by Price Picks. Price Picks is America's number one fantasy sports app with over 3 million members. It is the easiest and the most exciting way to play DFS. It is just you against the numbers. You pick more than or less than on two to six individual player stat projections and you watch the winnings roll in right now. It is demon time on Price Picks. You can win up to 100 times your money with as little as four correct picks. You can turn 10 bucks into $1,000. Demons and goblins are the newest and most exciting way to play at price. Big squares marked with red demons or green goblins get you different payouts. You can now win up to 100 times your money with as little as four correct picks. It's also fast to do it. We love to get things in and out in under 60 seconds, and that's exactly what you can do with a prize picks entry. Now, I would prefer, and I think it's going to be better for you if you just take it a little bit slower, pay a little bit more care and attention on your prize picks entries, but... If you need to get it done fast, you can. That is how easy it is over at PrizePix. So go to prizepix.com slash LockedOnNBA and use the code LockedOnNBA for a first deposit match up to $100. That is prizepix.com slash LockedOnNBA. The code is LockedOnNBA for a first deposit match up to $100. PrizePix, pick more, pick less. It's that easy. Okay. 
We've got more games? We do, because I'm being annoyed by other ones here. Port oh my god, this team. Portland and Orlando. All right. Portland plays Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Sunday, and then they have Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, Sunday next week. Orlando has Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Sunday this week, and Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday, Sunday. So the differences between these schedules is absolutely nothing. So who's in and who's out? I don't know. Does anybody? I'm going to go out on a limb and say that Jeremy Grant is doubtful to play with a hamstring strain. I know that's a bold call from me, and you know what? Maybe this is the one that he plays. He doesn't. He's not playing. I'm very confident he is not playing. This is the man that is allergic to March. I've never seen a phobia of a month that then extends into April like this man. It is, it is actually admirable to see this from Jeremy. I think he's going to be doubtful for this game. There you go. Doubtful. I said it. I also think that Anthony Simons is going to be out. I told you about a week and a half ago, or whenever it happened, that my understanding is that it's 75% chance that he will not play again this season. I do not know this to be a fact that he is out for the year, but I'm going to say that he's not going to play on Monday. I'm also going to go out there and just... just I don't know, just guess, I think, that um, DeAndre Ayton and his shoveler's wrist will flare up and he might be questionable for Monday. Just a guess. Just a guess. Matisse Thibel's ankle impingement, probably, probably I'm going to pop up in the injury report as well. I played seven minutes last game. Uh, in fact, like he left earlier. I, I, the question was actually too, too, um, too easy for Matisse. Uh, he's not playing. He's not playing. Shaden Sharp, still not back. I think there is a chance Shado returns on Sunday, maybe. Maybe. But I don't know that. Justin Manea is dealing with a back issue. He will get minutes in some of these games as things start to turn even worse for the Portland Trailblazers. Can they lose by 80 in one of these games? Maybe. For the Magic, last game, Gaz Harris and John Isaac sat because it's the back-to-back. -back. I'm going to go ahead and say they're going to be available for this one. Let's put them back in. They have one more back-to-back -back left this season, Orlando. So your John Isaac values are looking a lot better. And with Gaz Harris back, we need to see what that does. Now for Portland, Scoot Anderson set an NBA record for the worst plus minus. What was it minus 58? That's dreadful. It was actually one of his better fantasy games, to be honest. He played 41 minutes. He got good usage. The shooting is continually a problem, but we are getting a lot of stuff pumped into him at the moment. A lot of minutes, a lot of touches, which is exactly what you want to see. So I do think there is fantasy value in him. For the Magic, Jalen Suggs only played like 24, 25 minutes last game, but it was awesome. Now, he's always got that chance to throw up a two-point stinker. But I, I, like, I like watching him. His turnaround has been awesome. Who's getting boosted? Well, I with Tumani Kamara out for the year, with Jeremy Grant's hamstring just so close to returning, but he's still doubtful. Um, I, Jamari Walker's going to start, and he's going to play good minutes. Now, that, it could mean an absolute turd of a game. But of course, they have 17 and 10 with uh, a block, a steal, four assists. He could. So he is getting boosted, I would guess. Markel Fultz got a big boost last game for Orlando. I don't think that's the case again because Gaz will return, but it's worth monitoring because Fultz went from 17 minutes against the Warriors and then played 25. That was the start and then played 25 against the Grizzlies. So I want to watch what they do with Fultz and his minutes here. Atlanta and Chicago. The Bulls are on a back-to-back, -back, so they're playing Sunday. The Hawks, we know, have this great schedule. Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, Saturday, all four quality games this week. The Bulls have the worst schedule. They play Monday and then Friday, Sunday. And like I said on the weekly preview show, especially if this is your final week of the year, you can drop a lot of Bulls. You can drop Caruso. You can drop Tsumu after Monday. You can definitely drop like a Drummond, and Vooch becomes borderline. Because, like I detail on that show, what the difference in your... 11th best player on Friday or Sunday replacing that guy in the lineup versus getting actually guys in to play Wednesday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday and Saturday. Uh, it seems like a no-brainer to me. We don't have the updates on the Hawks, which would be good to know, but I don't think Anyeka Rokongu is going to play. I'm fully expecting that Trey Young is out and Kobe Bufkin and AJ Griffin and Muhammad Gay. I'm putting them all as doubtful. Trey Young, I'm just ruling out. The question mark is going to be Jalen Johnson. Now, Jalen was upgraded to questionable on the weekend against the Bucks, but he did not play. That would mean that there is a pretty high chance he plays either Monday or Wednesday. They do have a Wednesday, Thursday back-to-back, -back, the Hawks. Usually, sprained ankles, you can play through the back-to-back, -back, so I think you'll be all right if he does happen to return. For the Bulls, they do play this back-to-back -back here, like we said. Um, at the moment, Alex Caruso and Ayo Desumu are both questionable on Sunday. So until we hear anything further, I'm going to say that they're questionable for Monday. Desumu is dealing with an illness and Caruso is dealing with a consistent lower body injury. I would say that Caruso probably plays through it, but I don't know. The other one is Julian Phillips. He's going to be out 
DeJounte Murray is doing great stuff for Atlanta. Now he is taking an absolute million shots. This is going to be very, very, very important when we're looking at next season. This is him on the Spurs times a million because he is taking every shot in the world. They are not going in, but he is taking every shot in the world and he's being allowed to do whatever he wants. And if for some reason both him and Trey return on this team next season, he will not be allowed to do any of this stuff. And if he does get traded, or if the Hawks trade Trey and bring somebody else in, context is really important about who else is around DeJounte. So we do need to just keep watching what he's doing. Vic Krejci keeps getting boosted. He keeps doing nothing, but he keeps getting boosted. So given the volume of quality games the Hawks has compared to every other team in the NBA, there's at least some appeal there. Or for the Bulls, we do want to watch Alex Caruso, who keeps getting that boost. I expect that um, the Wolves could go a little bit more Drummond on Sunday, but that would shift back towards more Caruso, more Desumu on Monday, which boosts the numbers up there. This show is just going way too long. I've just been too ranty. The last game of the day is Phoenix and the New Orleans Pelicans. No back-to-backs involved in this one. The Suns go Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Sunday, and then they play Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday, Sunday, the week after, while the Pelicans are Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Sunday, and then Tuesday, Thursday. There's so many teams with this basic identical schedule. Damian Lee is out. Brendan Ingram is out for the Pelicans, and Jose Alvarado has missed the last two. He's going to slap a questionable tag on him here. For the Suns, Yusuf Nurkic just sucked a lot lately. He is back, but the minutes are sort of a bit all over the place. I wouldn't drop him yet, but after Wednesday, like, would you start Nurkic on Friday and Sunday? Probably not. I think that means he's moved vulnerable from. For the Pelicans, Najee Marshall gets the boost. Well, actually, what we want to watch is the Larry Nance, Jonas Valanciunas minutes interactions. Valanciunas played that big minute game on Thursday and then back to low minutes again on Saturday. He's very hard to rely upon. I would like to hold Valanciunas. Probably not Nance, but hold Valanciunas Monday, Wednesday, and then you can move on. Nance is probably droppable now, but like if he gets 27 regularly, you've got a little bit more of a discussion to make or discussion to have. Najee Marshall gets the boost there for the Pelicans. The Suns, no one's really getting boosted, honestly. Najee Marshall keeps getting the boost. It's not great what he's doing, and Dyson Daniels is back, but at least keep Marshall on the sort of back burner for slightly deeper um, stream scenarios. What about if we look at the back-to-backs Does anyone have a back-to-back Monday, Tuesday? No, they do not. So you can't benefit from both of these days being low-volume days. That sucks. If you look at the next four nights, that is Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, all four of these days are quality game days. They're all streamable days, and the Atlanta Hawks stand above everybody else. They have three games in that four-day period. Nobody else does. But a lot of teams have two. The advantage that the Hawks have is over the Bulls, the Spurs, and the Jazz. So we already know now that Larry Markkinen is going to be reevaluating in two weeks. They're going to re- reevaluate him, Larry Markkinen, with one game left in the season. What do you reckon the reevaluations are going to be? Larry, able to come in? So I'm sorry, guys. You're going to have to do this via Zoom. I'm at the pool. Oh, it just be a quick reevaluation, Bro, just do it from here. Is your arm sore? Yes, done. A very value- they're, they're kidding, right? This team is kidding. And this is the frustration with this player participation policy. It's, just, it's, all, it's all window dressing fake nonsense. None of this is real. None of this efforts that they make to stop this stuff is real. It's not. It's fake. But you want to put on a big show to pretend that it does something. It's not. Because the underlying cause and problem is still there. And the under and the underlying result that you want is still there. Your team to be good and either healthy in the playoffs and ready to roll and steamroll the best part of the NBA season, or your team is going to try out the younger guys, see what they can do, and get a better draft slot. They are the underlying things. You can't change those unless you change a fundamental part of the league and the system. All this other stuff is window dressing. Anyway, Larry Markkinen's out for the year. So you'd think that gives us more opportunity for Keontae George, for Taylor Hendricks. Yes, it does, more shots. But with that bad of a schedule... Are those guys good enough? And John Collins is now mysteriously dealing with a back issue. God, unbelievable. Just unbelievable. Um, Are the replacements there good enough to deal with a one-game in four-night stretch? Probably not. The Spurs are also starting. Does that mean Wimby's going to get involved? Because Keldon's out. Sohan's out. Vassell popped up on Sunday with a random uh, questionable tag, which probably means he's out. So, yeah, even like a replacement, like a bubble champagne. Maybe it's a Chetty Osman. Maybe it ends up being a Dom Barlow, the Trojan. Is that going to be worth it with only one game? Probably not. Really, really frustrating part. If we go to the next six days, 
we can get a little bit of an advantage there. So that's Monday through to Saturday. Understand that Friday is a high volume get day. Three teams play four games in six nights. Atlanta, Detroit, Memphis. Atlanta has four quality games. The Pistons and the Grizzlies have three. The problem with the Pistons and the Memphis Grizzlies is we don't know who's going to play. And on the downside, it's those same teams. The Bulls, the Spurs, the Jazz have just the two games on the low volume days. Oh, sorry, no, two games in six days. And there's only one quality game in amongst that. So it's really, really rough. Now, from here on out, when I look to the rest of this week, when I look to all of next week, there are no sort of situations where anyone gets a plus two games advantage. It doesn't exist. Until I look at the next 10 days. I look at the next 10 days, which takes us Monday through to Wednesday. We have a raft of teams that play six games in 10 nights. Atlanta, Charlotte, Dallas, the Clippers, the Grizzlies, the Heat, the Bucks, the Wolves, Thunder, Magic, Suns, and Raptors. There's a lot of teams. And on the downside, the Bulls and the Jazz play four games in 10 nights. All right, that's a, that's a decent difference. A spread over 10 days is not massively actionable. But I think this next part um, is. Because over the next 10 days, same time frame, there are... Again, 12 teams who have four quality games in the next 10 days. Atlanta leads the way with five. And then it's Memphis, Brooklyn, Cleveland, Denver, Milwaukee, Minnesota, Oklahoma City, Orlando, Phoenix, Toronto, four quality games in the next 10 game, ten days. And then there's these teams who have only two quality games in the next 10 days. So if you're looking at streamers from any of these guys, back-end players, it's rough. Boston, the Warriors, the Rockets, the Pacers, the Pelicans, the Knicks, the Blazers, the Kings, the Spurs, the Wizards. They've got two quality games in 10 days. The Bulls and the Jazz, one. One quality game day for the Bulls and the Jazz over the next 10 days. That's horrible. Boston has two quality games out of their five over the next 10. So while... There was a lot of champion and celebrating the value of a Peyton Pritchard league winner. If their starters play, like you don't actually ever get to use him. Like that's nothing. And that's where we're at with that. Let's talk streaming for Monday. Yahoo points. All of these guys are at least 50% available and a selection of them are under, under uh, sorry, over 70% available. Delano Banton, Aaron Neesmith, Vasily Misic, Trey Mann, TJ McConnell and GG Jackson are my top six options there with a little bit of a spread for roster percentage numbers. The ESPN list is very much the same. Delano Banton, Aaron Neesmith, Vasily Misic, Trey Mann, TJ McConnell. But I put John Isaac in there as well, who does get a bit of a boost with the extra benefit given to defensive stats on the ESPN scoring platform. For category leagues, an italicized name means that player is 70 plus percent available. The non-italicized means 50 plus percent. For scoring, I don't know why I just misspelled that because I am an idiot. Maybe I lost my brain when I got this haircut for eight bucks. That's the cost of it. Delano Banton's a good points streamer. So is Gigi Jackson. So is Vasily Misic. And so is Jake LaRavia for the deeper ones. For threes, all of these guys apart from Gigi are 70% plus available. Bertans, Canard, Gigi Jackson, and Sam Hauser. All can give you multiple threes. I'm going to be doing a lot of work in the offseason, preseason, on terms of streaming and value, because someone, I, I know I've talked about this for a long time, by a long time, at least 12 months, I'd say. But someone asked me, you've got time to sit through this year. Um, someone asked me the question yesterday, hey, I need to win threes for the week. Um, who would you add out of these four guys? Right? And one of them was like Harrison Barnes, right? Another one was Sam Merrill, for example. And I go, well, that, that depends, doesn't it? is that I feel pretty confident that Barnes is going to play 34 minutes and he'll probably hit your two threes. What's my upside value of Barnes? Like how often, how confident should I feel that he hits six? Right? Not very. Merrill could get you zero, but he could also go absolutely bananas and hit seven. So do you need to maintain threes? Do you need to get just a solid two to four triples to win? Or do you need an absolute home run threat to like, if it pops off, it's unbelievable. And that's the difference with some of this stuff. You want, like, who can get the chunks or who's the safer floor? Yeah, good story. Big man stats. Who are we looking at? Rebounds. Andre Drummond, I think his role on Sunday will be bigger than Monday, but he's a good rebound streamer. I've got Jabari Walker in there. 
the big fella, Big Dick Nick, is there, and Chemezi Metu, who's just available everywhere. For blocks, John Isaac, Nick Richards, Trey Jemison with the, one of the largest asterisks you've ever seen. Because he might literally might play zero minutes. But my assumption is that Jaron won't play, but I don't know that. Or well, Santi, I, I don't know. But Trey could be an option. And then Aaron Neesmith. Again, we talk about the upside in blocks. Like, he's got no upside in blocks, Aaron Neesmith, but he might get one or two. And he fills in in some other areas. Guard stats. Pretty obvious if you want assists, like it has to be Misic, then it's Man, then we get to Nempart, and then maybe Jordan Goodwin, but he could play zero minutes. Or it could be Scottie Pippen, he could play 20 minutes, or he could play 27 minutes. Or it could be some, honestly, I wrote about this on Basketball Monster yesterday, there is going to be one game this season for the Grizzlies where old mate Xavier Simpson has 12-team value. I don't know when that's coming, but it is going to happen. Hookshot legend is going to put up numbers. It's it, it in one game it will. For steals, Chimezi Metu, Delano Banton, Geordie Goodwin, and Chris Murray are your widely available guys to help you there. And lastly, we look at percentages for field goal percentage. Nick Richards and Brandon Clark are the easy top ones, I think. And then we go to Jim Wiseman, whose minutes are down with Dur- Duran back and playing big minutes, and the big avocado, Andre Drummond. And then lastly, for free throw percentage, all these guys are available everywhere. It's Chimezi Metu, the Duck Luke Canard, Davis Bertans, and Vasily Misic as a good option there for you. Sorry about that show. There was a lot of side notice stuff, a lot of um, sidebar stuff, um, and a little bit of a change in the way the schedule is going to happen again because of the way that the NBA is at the moment and where we are in the fantasy season. So it is a lot to take in. Hopefully everything is okay with you guys because I know for some, change is annoying. For me, it is too. So hit that subscribe button. Hopefully that doesn't change anything. Hit the thumbs up and leave your comments down below. Guys, we are done here. Thank you so much for listening, everyone. Hey, good luck. See ya.